Um, maybe, maybe just like in the, in the immediate present, something that these experiences with getting massages from other people has made me wonder about is like how you approach um, getting massages, like when you get massages yourself. And I know that you've talked about like that you had like a recurring relationship with a massage therapist in, in Asheville, I think, and uh, you would go to see him periodically. And um, I don't know, I, I, it's in retrospect, it seems to me like you need, a, like I at least need, and I imagine other people need like a sense of safety and trust and, and like, yeah, like love, um, like being loved and like accepted in order to like have a good massage on the kinds of dimensions that you and I care about. And, um, you know, like the sort of physical releases and like massage is fine, but to like really let it be a, a healing experience psychologically and emotionally like you need a sense of safety and love and trust and like mutual understanding I think and you and I could just go there when you started giving me massages because we already had that but I it makes me wonder like how you approach um, you know say you move somewhere in the next few months and like set up you know getting licensed and you know and whatnot like how are you going to approach finding a therapist yourself and like building that relationship and, and what advice would you give to someone that is like going to get a massage from someone? Yeah, it's such a good question. And I just had like all of these, like all of these different mm -hmm. ideas come up as you were asking. Um, yes, I had a consistent therapist in Asheville and then I've been moving around different parts of New Mexico um, for the last like five months, but I actually also have a consistent massage therapist here in Santa Fe. And I just like, um, I, since living in Santa Fe, I've been in other parts, mostly Taos, which is a little over an hour from Santa Fe. And I will still like drive down to Santa Fe to see her, to get massages from her because like, it's so worth it to me. Um, now that I, yeah, have like a known really amazing healer in the vicinity you know within 90 miles or something like mm. yeah I just I I'm going to see her this week I'm super excited um so yes I think that like the the safety thing is a huge aspect and people don't talk about it that much and it's not that it's impossible for somebody to make you feel that way right off the bat right upon meeting them I think that it is possible to feel very safe and loved and seen and accepted by somebody right away, but there are a lot of factors involved. Um, there is just something about like a personal fit. I mean, I think with like regular therapy, like it's the same thing, right? Like just some people are gonna be right for you and some people aren't and there's something like, it doesn't mean that person is not a good therapist if they're not a good fit for you, but there is some amount of just like experimentation and trying different people that I think I tried so many different people in Asheville before I found the right person. And that's hard. It's time consuming. It's expensive. And um, yeah, it just takes a lot of time and energy. And I think a lot of people until you've experienced like a really, really good transformative massage, you also just like, don't know that that's possible. So you might get an okay massage and be like, is that it? Was that, maybe that was a really good massage. Like maybe massage isn't really right for me. I don't know. People seem to rave about it, but that just seemed okay to me. It was pretty good. It felt good. Yeah. <laughs> getting touched feels good. Getting touched. It's fine. Feels good. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think if it like doesn't seem great, it's probably worth trying to still find other people. And then like what I was describing before with how I'm trying to build my site, I mean, it didn't take me as long to find the right person in Santa Fe as it did in Asheville. And I don't know, am I getting better at like telling the vibe from the site or was it luck? I don't know. But like um, having a really good sense now of this type of like the like emotional healing kind of atmosphere that I want in the session and like a really warm, loving person. I mean, I, I think I probably got a really good feeling from her page when I first went to it and it felt like you know it had the similar vibe to what I'm looking for in a session um for other people you might be looking for something else you might be looking for somebody who's like almost more on like the physical therapy side of massage or like a sports massage or really deep tissue massage or or whatever the case may be so 
having some sense of um of what you're looking for which can also take some experimentation too a lot of times if you go to one of these spas that have a lot of people on staff they have like a whole menu of different types of massages that you could that you could try and start to get a little bit of a better sense of what it is that you're looking for and again i know that that can get really expensive to like dabble around in and experiment a lot but um yeah different people are really drawn to different types of massages and different types of massage therapists um i feel like there's this whole like other element of like um it's really interesting to see what comes up with a massage therapist. Like, let's say you find a really good massage therapist, but then you notice there are these ways that you're still holding back a little bit, or like you have some kind of like, um, it's almost like it can be a good way to do shadow work or something. Um, I, I guess it's like that in regular therapy too. Like you talk about, like people talk about transference and counter transference, right? Like, um, projecting stuff onto your therapist and so it's it can be interesting to notice I guess like if there's something I'm like hesitating to give really specific examples but if there's something that's making you feel a little blocked with the person I think it can be really valuable to feel into whether like that person is just not a good fit for that reason or whether there is something there on your end that actually can be worked through and unblocked um and then there's also just stuff you can experiment with like um sometimes i'll take like a really small dose of like a weed edible before a massage um it like particularly in indica will like bring about just like a really mild body high that i find to be like perfect for for getting massages and like feeling into my body as much as possible and um, also just changes my relationship with pain in like a, uh, a really helpful way. Um, and yeah, I, particularly with that massage therapist in Asheville, I, there was one point where I just noticed that I had a lot of emotional stuff of like a specific flavor that I was having trouble expressing in those sessions. And so I just like before one session, I took a weed edible and it just really helped kind of like break down those specific barriers. And then I don't think I kept taking edibles after that because kind of felt like it had served that specific purpose. Mm. But um, yeah, that feels like some some ideas that I have. I think there are more. Yeah, I think it's like a whole art is like the art of like how you get massaged and how you, how you show up in a session. And it's it's really not just like getting on the table and being like, fix me. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a it's the whole thing is sort of a co-creation and a dance and a a joint a joint effort so i think there's a lot to it and that feels like kind of scratching the surface at least <laughs>